Spirit Garden and I'm going to do a little tour for you today of how things are doing in mid-June. Um, so we have not much to uh, do quite yet. We have a lot of wind though. Hopefully our audio is okay. Um, we don't have a ton yet, but lots of things have grown since we planted things out and did our first few garden tours. This is the month of growth, not of harvest, here in New England. Uh, we won't get any harvests until probably mid-July. Um, so with this one, our goal at this time, point in time, our main goal is maintenance and keeping things bug free. So let me take you around. I start over on this end of the garden here, which is um, the end here where we have our tomatillos and stuff, just because the sun has set behind the big tree there. And I'm gonna try and do all of our garden tours in one day today, all during one golden hour. And this tall tree here, the sun goes behind, is what's gonna make that possible so that I can do these, jump in the car, head over to the community garden, and it still being golden hour there. Since there's not a lot of trees there, we're going to have to use that dusk lighting to see just about anything. Here's the tomatillo bed. You can see these very cheap structures that I put up last week. With what happened to the, my tomatillo at home, it, one of them fell over. Um, I just wanted something to help it out. Now, if anybody has any advice for me on this plant, um, one of our tomatillos, just one, has this veining happening on these outer top leaves. And I can't find too much information about that. Um, I've seen yellowing leaves. I know that's a nitrogen or calcium deficiency and whatnot, but not that. So I'd love anybody's help if they know what this is in particular. These guys are doing very well. Um, this one here set first. You can see we've got some nice tomatillos setting fruit. Um, and this will be flush one and um, flush two will um, probably then be the next blooms that you see on here. Um, they are markedly smaller than the ones that I had at home when they started blooming and setting fruit. So that'll be very interesting. Mine waited quite a bit longer. You can see this one here. So I gotta move that, that leaf for us. That one over there is the biggest one. That one will be our first probably. Um, out of all of them. Now, around all the beds, you can see a ton of nasturtium I started this year. The variegated kinds that you see are the Alaska salmon color. So they're variegated and they have a nice, pretty salmon-y tone. Most of them did well. One or two do not look super great. See, any of the variegated ones are that type. And any of the non-variegated kind are the ladybird rose that we purchased from seed from Florette flowers. You can see that one's doing really great right there, whatever conditions it's getting. Um, these beds got an extra compost this year um, as their mulch. Um, since there, they got filled with um, a soil blend that had compost in it but not necessarily um, a ton of compost as they mulched this year. And since they were on two new beds, or this is one and this is two, right? Um, one large bed that has two sections. Um, and so we did buy some organic, lovely compost in the bag for specifically this section. Now, this is the pepper and eggplant main section meaning the majority of the peppers and eggplants are over here, but they are not exclusively in this area. Um, these two eggplants here, um, oh no, these two here, I think are the um, Beatrice F1s. They are sort of the like rounder, um, larger kind. They are a lovely variety. Um, and this one is the Listata de Giada, I think it's called. Um, all varieties will be listed below and links to where I purchased them will be on are on my Pinterest board, which I will also link all, below all videos. Um, that way you can see exactly everything and it links to that seed 
uh, where I purchased everything um, or a place where you can find them. Like this one here, this eggplant is not doing super great. It has set three flowers and all three of them have fallen off at this point after blooming. I have tried to help them out, get nice and pollinated, but they're not, it's not taking off as well as I would have hoped. Um, so we'll see how it goes. This lovely flower. We'll see if it, if it, you know, produces any fruit. It is good that it is a little bit taller now. Some of them were a little bit low anyway. I almost pick off their blossoms anyway. Um, for peppers in this bed, we have one habanada. Um, and then we have um, an assortment of other things. These two are definitely this one here. And this one over here are our sweet banana peppers. And then I believe this one is a Cupid pepper. This one is the uh, Javarsky. And this one, and this one I think are our lilac bell peppers. And that one there is our purple one, which I will again link that Pinterest video. Um, I forget the name of it. Um, it is a long purple skinny pepper and I will show you those flowers up close. They are quite interesting. As you guys know, a lot of peppers, you just can't tell what they are until they start setting fruit. And really that fruit does what it will do in terms of shape and style. And they all just kind of look like that. Except this one here has purple flowers. It's so cool. Let me show you. Look at that guy there. So pretty, right? Um, this is definitely the most unique pepper plant out of all of them that we have growing this summer. Um, just because it looks different than the rest of them. They're sort of hard to, hard to tell what things are. And unfortunately, this is what happened with most of my labels. As you can see, if you put some contrast on it, you can read, uh, banana. Uh, I know that that says banana out of the different possibilities. Um, so that's what happened to our labels. <laughs> that's why I'm not sure about what some things are. And then some are missing. And I didn't plant this bed, my mother did. She's my helper. This is her house, this is her land that I garden on. Let's turn around and do a flower bed. We have some things that are very exciting happening down here. Um, this is my first larkspur. Seriously, it is hard to explain how beautiful this is. Ignore the ugliness behind it. This plant is unbelievably gorgeous. I'm not a huge delphinium or larkspur fan until I saw these on Florette. I much, I just, I'm not a huge blue flower fan. This, however, set my heart afloat. We've got quite a few more coming in of there. And you might notice we have some Cosmos. I did pick some yesterday. I wasn't planning on doing this video yesterday, that's why. Um, you can see we have some seashell Cosmos. Um, they're doing really good. I've been pinching them out by cutting them, which is one thing that they just sort of needed. Now, the rest of the flower bed isn't doing, didn't do what we were hoping it would do. A lot of our seed did not germinate because we just couldn't water it with a hose. We had to dump water on it from jugs from my apartment. Uh, let me tell, we'll, we'll hold on for the siren. We live in an area called Bristol County. It is a three town area of um, Rhode Island. And unfortunately, there was a pipe leak across the river and everyone in Bristol County had to start using the water from my city, um, which is right next door. And it meant that they were on a restriction here while they went and dug up a giant hole under the river or next to the river to find the leak. Turns out the, the water problem ha was a lot larger than they, or than they expected, or it's a lot farther under the river. So it took them a very long time to find it. And so, um, 
before we got to finally being able to talk to neighbors, just because we're not always around at the same time, we were carrying jugs and jugs of water back in here and using rainwater to start seeds, which isn't optimal. Um, our neighbors, however, um, do have a well in the back and offer and let us use it. So thank goodness, or we wouldn't have any of the beans that you'll see or <laughs> any of the cucumbers or carrots, things like that. And most likely a lot of our other stuff would not have done well because I would have gotten too exhausted of carrying 20 plus gallons of water back and forth from my apartment. So without further ado, the rest of the flower bed. Okay, so this is exclusively cut flowers this year. There's no like design except for good spacing for cut flowers. These are these snapdragons. This is the Madame Butterfly Peaches and Cream um, snapdragons. These were purchased from Florette. And what's lovely about this mix is that you can kind of tell which ones they're going to be, right? See how beautiful that is right there. So pretty. That's definitely gonna be one of the darker pink ones. I think reddish ones, right? And then you can see some of the other ones are a little lighter. They don't have that red tinge around the edges. Um, so you can kind of tell what, what's going to be what, which is really, really cool. One thing that happened with a couple of these is that they sort of fell over and then put up more sprouts. So you can see here how these ones fell over and now we have this long piece here. It goes from here all the way over here and there are buds coming up along that whole section, which, you know, would have happened if the plant got bushy, but I don't mind if it happens this way. We're talking about cut flowers, um, not a border, so I don't mind. So I did fill in with a couple of things here. One of the things I filled in with were these Bronze Beauty Calendula. I almost purchased these by seed this year, but didn't. I didn't with the Strawberry Blonde instead. You can see some of our seed did come up. So only one out of these five stakes here came up. Um, and that is where our chocolate cosmos were. So I might have one chocolate cosmos. And then only one of the Senora came up of the zinnias. So with that, I know, um, I knew I could start more at home. So I have a, about um, 25 more zinnias to plant out here in the next couple of weeks once I realized we had such bad germination. Um, you can see we have a couple of more cosmos in there. And over here, these kind of spiky looking leaves here are um, China asters. And these are like a lavender-ish style color here. You can see our rhubarb patch that isn't doing super great this year um, in the back. You've got some red amaranth. Um, and these are just Coreopsis, Black-Eyed Susan. And we have three sets of lovely sunflowers in the back of this here. Got a couple here and across here. And just very difficult to weed next to this uh, fencing for the deers and whatnot. So, um, I did fill in with zinnia that I purchased all in here. The ones that are, you can see that are tall and, and upright are all Benaries, um, mixed colors, whites, uh, purple, no, I don't think I did purple. I think, I think, I think I did bright pink, rose pink, coral, and white. Um, knowing that if I got other ones to set, they would be peachy tones, white tones of the cosmos in here. If those do, those are psyche white. Um, from Cetaholic, and we'll see how those <laughs> produce. Um, and we have a section of Clary Sage and the Clary Sage mix, or the Clary mix, from uh, Florette as well. So there are a couple of things you can see where the sticks are, or where there are seedlings, uh, whether there's zinnias, cosmos, um, or potentially a weed that looks like a zinnia or cosmos seedling. Um, so we will be putting more in. This lovely patch here is the straw flower patch. And they are a mix here of mostly the silver pink. They're very, very light whitish with a little pink tinge to them. Um, and the apricot mix from Saved Seed from last year. 
You can see some of the Larkspur fell over here, just like the, the, the other ones. I'll, I'll just throw some of those new seedlings in. And a, in a couple of places, I do have these lovely guys, which I believe are our um, pincushion flowers or scabiosas. And they're in the double rose pink, um, again, from Cedaholic. It's one of my favorite places to buy seeds. They're from Ireland. They will probably be my almost exclusive, except for some veggies from Baker Creek next year. Okay, we're on to the next place the sun has set on us so we can film, um, to these two pots here. Now these are really fun. I have no idea how they are going to go. If you saw our last video, you know what they are. There are ketchup and fries um, tomatoes. So I believe we have one ketchup and fry in each one here, and we have one also of the, this is the Tom Tato ketchup and fries, um, which is this bigger one on this side. And then there is also a different variety, basically another grafted here, which is a sun gold sweet million grafted tomato. Um, meaning that they're a grafted of the two, the two kinds, so that'll give us a lot of um, sun golds. But we should have grafted potatoes in the bottom of each of these, which is why we put two in the very large pot. These are styrofoam. They're our favorite pots to grow things in. Um, and they're doing very well. We have had quite a wet spring, even though a lot of our plants were, were planted early this year. Um, we lost a couple of buds and things. You can see the tomato is in there, but I did lose a couple of tomatoes that had set already on here. But these are, look how many we'll get, they'll give us. Really, really beautiful. Um, so we'll see how these go. These are the only tomatoes that we sent away for this year. And we bought them from Territorial Seed, but I think you can get them on Gardeners as well if you're looking for next year just to have fun. We're not really to make, uh, potato growers. We don't have that kind of space. Um, and so this was an, a chance for us to be able to have that kind of space. But the light in here is just brilliant at this time of day. So we are here in this middle veg patch. You can see here, this is the section that still ha the sun has not set on yet. And we just looked over at the flowers and peppers and tomatillos. And here we are in the middle. And this is our trellis, which I'm probably gonna have to add more string to, but it was just to sort of see how far we had, how much we had to get started uh, with a little bit of something to work with. Um, the center of the trellis patch here does have a couple of carrot rows. So I have three rows on each end. Um, I believe that one is um, an Amarillo carrot and the other one is Red Dragon or something like that. Again, they'll be in my Pinterest board and I'll list them below. We then have three to four kinds of cucumbers here because I wanted to try some new varieties this year than the regular sort of burpless ones that we tend to purchase. Um, so we have, um, we have something else going in here, around here, going on or in here. I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, but, um, on this end here, we have Jibai Shirazazu. They are Japanese cucumber. Um, they are from Baker Creek and, uh, they are really sweet, supposedly. And on this end, we have Bait Alpha, B-E-I-T Alpha. And, um, these guys are supposed to be, those are like the, when you see Middle Eastern, um, cucumber sold in the store. This is the heirloom of the original type of the bait alpha cucumber that you see. Um, and these are from originally, I think, um, bred in Israel. Now, in the center here, <laughs> I made a little mistake. And um, what's supposed to be here is just the experimental cucumber from row seven, which is supposed to be a very nutty cucumber. Um, however, when I was holding the seed packet, I realized I was holding a different seed packet than I thought I was. They're almost identical between the two of them. And so this little guy here 
this little one here and this little one here technically are not cucumbers and I am going to probably attempt to move them in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> You're not really supposed to move squash. We'll see how that goes. Um, these are the um, Trombuccino Experimental Squash um, from uh, row seven and you can tell because of the marking here on the on here no cucumber has this kind of uh, variegated marking that kind of looks like mildew but squash does so that's why you can tell the difference here between a squash and a cucumber the rest of this part i probably made a mistake on in terms of which beans were bush and which beans were pole beans so we'll see how that goes um I knew that dragon tongue beans were bush beans, however, so there's a whole line of dragon tongue beans in the back here. And then we have golden rush, kalima, and red swan. And again, I thought red swan was a pole bean, but who knows? I did put a couple of other pole beans near the center ones, so we'll see what happens in terms of what it looks like um, and whether or not we really needed all of this trellising or whatnot, but at least the cucumbers will have a trellis, which they do need, and these will just be bush beans on this side. Now, we have three cherry tomatoes here. I believe it's a uh, black um, and then two jaspers. Um, however, this one over here has fallen over and then a couple days ago and stayed that way since nobody noticed it and has now grown kind of that way. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get him upright again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and this one has a gigantic sucker, which I noticed this afternoon versus today when I did about four hours of weeding. I obviously did not finish weeding. Um, because yeah, oops, whatever. So a couple of random bush beans ended up in here. You can tell they're a little yellower, the um, dragon tongue variety, than some of the other ones over there. And then there's um, a, there are two or three satin moon eggplants here. And those are, uh, they look like black beauties, but they're just like, which is like your quote unquote normal grocery store. Um, but they're sort of squattier. And then our garlic patch we planted last September is looking really great. Um, they are not quite ready to be harvested yet. I would say we are we have one to two sections. You can see where they're dried out. That'll tell you that when you have four of those that, that are dried out and yellow, that you're ready to go in terms of harvest. So it's usually, it's supposed to be July. That is that is a suspicion that I think is going to be true. Hopefully we don't get too much rain in the next couple of weeks, however. Now, we have a little bit of a rhubarb situation here. I mean, excuse me, radish situation. They are starting to bolt a little bit. Um, and I am going to pull some of these today. They have no bulbs. Um, and the idea here is that they come out anyway. Um, because we have a couple of tomatoes in here, knowing that these guys would be coming out soon. Um, we have our leftover, these are our Prescott tomato patch, actually. Um, Napa grape, orange Wellington, and there's a brandy wine over there, which we will see in a moment. Um, I'm just gonna pull out some of these ones that are bolting here for us. And give the tomato just a little bit more room since there are no bulbs forming on these radishes anyway. Um, this, that row that I just pulled out most of um, was the most underperforming radish that I've ever grown. I will never, I will not use the rest of the seeds. It is called a Saxa, S-A-X-A, -A, and it is terrible, truly terrible. If you know radishes, you know that these on the end are watermelon radishes and they will be here for quite a while. Um, they need quite a few months to grow. And then we had the Saxa, that's where these were. These are supposed to be a 30 day variety and they're now bolting, even though they're very thinned. Um, and uh, yeah, terrible, terrible. We'll never grow them again. However, I do love these. These are Zalata, Z-L-A-T-A. 
I'm gonna give them a little bit more time, although I probably could pick that one there. I'm gonna give it uh, this week. Maybe I'll check in on Wednesday or so and pick some of the rest of them. And this is Cherry Bell. It's a normal variety. You can get it at Botanical Interest, which is like available at Whole Foods in terms of varieties. Easy, normal. These are really spicy and yellow. They're wonderful. Um, those I will grow again. I will never grow the, um, the Saxa again. And I don't like waiting this long for watermelon radishes. So there, I just kind of throw them on if I have space. Okay, let's head over there. Okay, so we have our lovely bib lettuce here. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six heads, which is awesome. I have a head I just brought back yesterday from this spot here. And where we've been harvesting, we added in some of the extra plants that we had. You can see there's the brandywine tomato. And we have some beets over here sewn in modules, just out of a, let's see if it works, kind of a deal like the Charles Doubting method. These are the row seven um, seed. Uh, these are the sweet um, yellow beets and they're supposed to be incredibly delicious. Um, and then over here we have three hot peppers which had no label on them except for hot. <laughs> they just got them at a farm stand um, and I had sort of swapped with them with somebody at the community garden. So they didn't have a label she didn't see the label yeah <laughs> um you'll see the rest of them over at the allotment space for that tour and then we have some good old celery here it's like a nice long time to grow so that will be there for a while and the other satin moon eggplant is right here those guys are doing good they went in approximately two to three weeks after the other eggplants so now the rest of this bed here we have mostly tomatoes on that end, right? See those? Tomato patch. Um, and then this end is our Meg found little bits of space for things between the herbs. Now these are my pepino melons and they are doing horribly, horribly. Um, this one here got spider mites in my apartment and it survived uh, me picking off most of its leaves <laughs> um, because I'm grossed out by things in masses and you know I actually think that these are it has been too wet for these guys to be truly happy um, because they are from South America or middle or Central America I think maybe um, I just think maybe they're not they're not super happy here Pepino melons are a funny little melon. They're in the, I think, nightshade family. Are they related to tomatoes um, and eggplants more than anything? Um, but pepino in Spanish means cucumber. And so it basically means cucumber melon. Um, it looks like an eggplant slash tomato with a purple and yellow uh, outside. Um, all, again, in the Pinterest board, there's like links to all of the seeds. These are from Baker Creek. I started them from seed. Uh, they were really hard to germinate. Um, extremely hard to germinate. I had to do two tries. Um, but if I got a fruit off of it and it was able to, tr to test it and eat it, I think I'd be happy and I don't think I'd grow them again. Um, but that's what this is about is testing and trying fun new things. Um, yeah. So... We'll see what happens if I get one. Um, who knows? Um, but that's that's the goal there. They don't get super big, um, and they're supposed to taste a little bit like a cucumber honeydew, but with a completely different texture. So um, if we ever get one and I get to taste it, I will let everybody know how it is. Here is a butternut, and it's called butterscotch. Um, probably pretty similar to the row seven variety. Um, it's a really small one. It's supposed to be very sweet. Um, I thought we had a packet of the row seven honey nut. Can't find it. So I picked this one up at the garden center instead. Um, randomly, there is a calibos cabbage in here. Um, and then we have our giant horseradish patch here, which is so lovely. It is perennials to grow if you love horseradish do it and um, I think I moved 
a Ostia zucchini over here. No idea. I don't think it's getting enough sun and it'll probably never produce because it's probably not getting enough sun behind the gigantic horseradish. So probably won't ever do anything, but I had put it someplace and needed that space and so had to move it. We come back over to our tomato patch here. This giant coriander is so pretty and falling over everywhere. Um, there are some of the leftover, um, um, these are the mild peppers, I believe, in the back there. I need to deal with my mother's chive bush <laughs> and coriander. You can see the, cori you know, cilantro, coriander, same thing. One's set seed and the flowers are so pretty. And I love um, using these as fresh coriander in the garden. I mean, in cooking, they are so delicious. Um, rather than buying them in a jar. It's crazy, crazy good. What a pretty sight, huh? What a pretty sight. Okay, so in the tomato patch, I'll show you from this view how much we have. One, two, three cherry tomatoes. I think white here and then the rest of the other two are black, black cherry and then two jasper, three jaspers, I believe. Um, and then we have two black crims. This in the center here is a uh, Dr. Weich's or Witchy's yellow. Um, I can't pronounce it because I watch <laughs> the Roots and Refuge and she goes back and forth on what she thinks is correct and then stumbles over the correct pronunciation. So um, now I'm not actually sure um, and I I mess it up myself because I see her mess it up and then I mess it up. Um, I put some buttercup marigolds in between to uh, these guys. They're just really light. I just don't like orange. So yeah. <laughs> um, and I believe this is a black crim. And then we have our other beef steaks. And this is the one that I will butcher the name of the Castelluto Fiorentino. And I wonder if I can get one of these guys. And you can see how ribbed this guy is here. See that? That is a Castelluto. I don't know if I'm able to turn him over. I don't want to hurt him. Um, a Castelluto is a one of those very ribbed, shorter heirloom slicers. And this one over here is an Abe Lincoln. So big giant red slicer, big giant yellow slicer, and the ribbed kind here in terms of big slicers, and then the two black ones, and then lots of cherries and different varieties. That is the majority of the backyard garden inside the fence here at set. Um, I will walk you around to a couple of things that we threw into the garden this year. Um, in our little L-shaped border here, um, because we did put some edibles out there, of course, um, and some beautiful flowers. And we all know that I like to do about half cut flowers and half vegetables. Um, so you can see all my, my nasturtiums are everywhere. Um, you know, I don't even mind putting marigolds in between things because they're just pretty. Um, I don't love the orange ones, but the white ones are ter certainly pretty. By the trellis here, in the back of the house, we see our sticks and our sticks show us where we had planted the seed for our um, cantaloupe. So the ones here, one, two, three, those are, these are the Chanterai melons. These are true cant um, cantaloupe melons versus musk melons. These are the French variety that are those little personal shaped ones. You can see they're doing okay gotten eat a little bit eaten over here but I think they're gonna be okay lots of different things those are spider whatever flowers they'll go over soon um, Shasta daisies will be done soon the hostas amazingly have survived the deer over here for the time being I mean uh, one of our other shrubs over here this one has been eaten alive it's a choke berry um, but it was a very special choke berry so, yeah. <laughs> um, over here we put some squash. These are Dunja, D-U-N-J-A. Um, 
these are zucchini. They're like a good old zucchini. Um, I think these are vining. I'll have to check whether these are vining or bush um, just to, to find out. And in this open section here, we have our other variety of cantaloupe. Now, are these gonna survive? This is unclear. Um, these guys have been eaten down to the ground multiple times. Um, these guys have been eaten a couple times too. And I believe the other one is right here. Um, these are Jenny Lind, or Golden Jenny Lind, excuse me. Jenny Lind are true musk melons, which is what we think of when we think of um, a cantaloupe um, in the US. Um, they are um, a golden variety of a very famous honeydew melon, honeydew musk melon um, called Jenny Lind. This is a golden Jenny Lind, and these were from Baker Creek. Let me show you some of the flowers we put into the border. Over here we have some of the more of the pincushion scabiosa, and this is a patch of Orlia next to our gigantic, um, it's called um, false indigo or something else, it has another name. Um, and this is our really lovely lilac, and in here we have on the bottom is where one of our patches of um, Lily of the Valley is. Okay. We have our cantaloupes and our lovely... I remember when we painted this, I was like 15. My mother came and made me come out here and paint this. And there was nothing else here. Like we hadn't dug the beds yet. And um, I remember painting it and getting stunned by a bee. It was my first bee sting and I was like, I don't know, 14. My mom was like, suck it up, you're 14. Um, we planted these guys here, these fluffy, ferny looking things, all over. So we've got quite a few here and quite a few, a couple on the end over here. They're going to get much taller and they're going to look totally beautiful here. These guys here are the summer berry variety of the Echelea or Yarrow. And these here are a, we bought these in full. These are from seed, the Yarrow is from seed. Um, these are hollyhocks that are coming in. A new tick seed from my mom. More hostas. We got a new Monarda bee balm this year. That one is a corally pink. That right there. And this one's a nice purple to go with it. We really love those. Mix them with sedum, rhubarb, lots of other fun things in here. Um, there are some like random daylilies and whatnot. So that's it for the backyard garden for um, the mid-June, sorry about that, for the mid-June uh, tour. Um, we are going to be heading over to the allotment in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna take advantage of a couple of minutes of this beautiful light, take some photos for the garden, um, and um, head on over there and show you guys what's happening there. Today, I did some pretty big things over there. Probably stupid, but we'll find out. And um, I'll show you how things are coming along um, at the community garden as well. So have fun and we'll see you in the next video.